everyone, uh, all of our friends and fanatics of the Pikes Peak Apex, bringing you something a little different in today's Riders Spotlight. We thought it'd be really cool to dive in with our course designer, Daniel Matheny, to see what it's like to design four days of a big backcountry event. Thanks for joining us this morning, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and how you got involved with the Apex? Sure. Um, like you said, Daniel Matheny, I've uh, been here in Colorado Springs for about 15 years now. Um, moved from kind of centralized uh, in Nashville and have been a pro racer, coach, um, worked at USA Cycling. So I've been in the industry for a while and very passionate about the mountain bike side of things. So just being involved um, with like different entities um, kind of came to the fruition that the event, like, wanted to showcase what we have here. And so I don't know how Micah and I got connected, um, whether our crossing paths at USAC or something like that, but I wanted to be able to showcase what we really have here, um, especially like Palmer Park being 15 minutes from my, my back door at my house and riding these trails days in and days out. You know, it was something very close to me where I was like, okay, if we're gonna showcase the trails here, a lot of it hasn't been that well known. Our trails have gotten better, better known lately um, and better work and cohesiveness, but you know, there's a lot of stuff where it's you've got to know the, the lay of the land and connect some things with some roads and gravel and things like that to make it happen. So that's kind of how I got involved was Micah, Micah and I connected over coffee one day and uh, next things next, it was kind of laying out, laying out courses. Yeah, I being a mountain biker up in the Fort Collins area, I knew about Palmer Park, but none of the other trails that we experienced during the apex. And so I think the event is a really amazing showcase for the area and with that in mind that you're designing an event for both pro racers to get the word out but also this big bucket list event for um for all the rest of us what type of considerations do you keep in mind knowing that you want to throw some mountain bike type features in there but you also want to make it super accessible yeah i mean that's that's a tough uh tough balance for sure because obviously like uh, myself, I like, you know, cross country racing and enduro racing, gravity racing, like I used to do all that in college. And so I like it as, as technical as, as it can be thrown out, I guess, without getting too dangerous. But it's, you know, I also work with a lot of athletes and have over the years of coaching for the last 15 or 20 years to see that, you know, everybody's ability level is different. So there's kind of what I consider like a bell shaped curve, like, you know, there's uh, even working with some trail designers that have built trails in other cities, they, they have different levels of trails and like say, oh, this is a black trail or this is a beginner trail. And I don't, I've, even from working with USA Cycling, a lot of times I've realized that people don't like being labeled, um, whether it's like, oh, I can only ride the beginner trail. And I think it's nice to have trails that are, um, maybe don't seem technical, but they're technical if you ride them with speed. Um, so the standpoint is, is like having some technical bits where you can have some options and things like that. So everybody's got a little bit of, um, satiation and with speed it makes kind of it work across the board so i think that's that's part of it is you know throwing some things in there where there may be some line options or um even like technicality when when you when you increase that speed whether it be like the moto whoops and things like that that are part of our um the way our trails were built here um it wasn't all just bike trails and a lot of the stuff we access is you know backcountry stuff that is not maintained by bikers it's you know it's been there for a while, whether it be OHV or ATVs and things like that. So um, they can be made fun in their own regard with by changing just the, the rate that people progress them at. So yeah, and I think people also it's okay to walk and it's okay to dismount your bike and walk over something if, if you feel uncomfortable. And I think that's the beauty of mountain biking because you can progress as you see fit. Yeah. And I don't think there was tons of stuff like I tried to make it where, you know, like that bell shaped curve analogy, like where it fit the majority, um, because the, the pros are going to race it fast and make it challenging as they see fit. But also you don't want to make it where, um, you know, we, we ride bikes because we want to pedal bikes, not necessarily walk them. Um, there are some things where certain people don't like exposure and some of the some of the parts of the courses had some of that where I don't even acknowledge it anymore because it's just my backyard and I ride it and don't even see that there's a a big slide on the, on one side, but some people saw that and they're like, oh, I can't believe this was in the course. It's so dangerous. And I'm like, well, it is if you're only staring there. It's almost like, you know, the mentality of coaching. It's like, if you want to 
avoid something, don't look at it, right? <laughs> so it's like, you want to hit the rock, stare right at it. <laughs> but uh, there's some other things. It's like Palmer Park, is if you've ridden it, like it's an inherently rocky kind of challenging terrain. But it's like the way I see designing some of these courses is kind of sprinkle in a little technical piece that gets people maybe on their edge of comfort but then allow them to get out of it with opening it up with some passing area or some double track, or even like not everybody's technically savvy and not everybody's is fit, but there are, there are some that kind of go one side of the uh, uh, kind of transition and the others on the other to where, you know, some may make up time with their fitness and that, that's the case. They may kind of tiptoe through some of the techie sections, but then just have tons of horsepower and be able to make it up where they can pedal. So I feel like even with the prologue, um, that was one of the most challenging and, a lot of time spent over there trying to fit, make that work. Use the most amount of mileage and train that Palmer Park had to offer, and it came out really good. And even locals here are still going out and riding that course that I see weekly and saying that you put together a cool course. And it, you know, it wasn't all just me. Like Micah worked hard on it too, and we were going back and forth with different iterations to make it flow, and it turned out really, really well. So it did. The Palmer Park course was by far my favorite. Um, can we expect maybe this year to see any changes in that? Are, are you going to spill any beans for, for us who are tuning into this interview? Well, I don't think we can spill beans as far as it's going to be the same. Um, last year, we had some challenges, like because of the whole COVID year, social distancing, all that stuff. So we, we were actually going to run a mass start um, in waves last year, or we were considering it because it was so hard to pull off a time trial. But we may actually stick with that time trial format because it was such a good reason. And we actually changed the course several times last year because of that. Um, but with the openings of being able to run more people together, that could be a change. But, you know, we don't, one of the things is some of the locals would have an advantage if we posted the course, especially with Palmer Park, because it's like one of those things, if you really know it, you can go in there and have it super dialed. And I would say that from the experience of even racing 24 hour nationals and winning a national championship there, it was an unfair advantage to be able to roll from my door and go over there and know the course because, you know, I was pulling night laps as fast as people were pulling day laps. And it wasn't because of just fitness. It was like, I could just flow through there and knew where I was going. So the thing is like, we don't want to release that one too early. There may be some changes because part of the, the stewardship of the race is actually giving back. And so some of the trails that were built for the race last year were part of the um, money that, that came in from the entry fees and all that stuff to build new trails. So there's that stuff that's being worked on. So there may be some slight changes and it's always fun to, to offer up a new little tidbit here and there to throw, throw it off or you know, there may be some fun features that we weren't able to incorporate last year that we could this year. So my intent is to, to change it up slightly, even just like we've done just the, the stage to stage days where we have Monument and Mount Herman now instead of Rampart, things like that. So. Yeah, that's a great reminder. Thank you for that, that uh, a lot of our entry fees in part of um, the apex goes to goes back to the trails, goes back to help improving those trails and expanding trail access as well. So thank you for that reminder. Um, now, in addition to COVID-19 last year, uh, were there any other challenges that you found in designing the courses, especially I know we had to um, reroute, I think, I think day four and day three got some last minute changes last year. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I think there were, uh, there were lots of changes throughout the year. I mean, the work that we put in with the amount of courses and permitting, and I mean, we had lots of alternatives in our back pocket that had to be pulled out um, because even there was supposed to be some stuff on Air Force Academy last year. And because it's a DOD Department of Defense, they said, yeah, we were good to go and riding with lieutenants and had courses mapped out. And then, you know, then the month leading in, it was like, nope, not going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, the, a lot of that stuff is behind the scenes and people don't see that actually making sure that we have access to these, these trails and stuff like that. Um, the main challenge was because of, you know, this is a partially a mountain bike festival, like, you know, it's bringing people together. And that was what was very challenging to do last year because we wanted a centralized location to have start finishes to kind of highlight the Olympic city USA. Um, to have people experience and bring, you know, their economy to town, the businesses and things like that. But with having to move our start and finish locations to away from a centralized location, you know, that forced the, the setup crew to, to migrate to different spots um, throughout the city and places where we wouldn't normally do that. And then it kind of limited the 
kind of the post celebration, like finishing a, in a parking lot uh, away from the town and away from a centralized start location was a little bit challenging because then, you know, people had to roll back to their start line or their respective locations. So hopefully we can we can overcome that this year and have a little bit more of a, a vibe and a mountain bike festival um, approach. And that, so that's something we're working on um, that should be better. And that's part of the reason I think why I, I like doing this stuff as much as it is. It's not necessarily that, you know, I can, I can go out and ride these courses anytime in most towns, but it's part of having a supported race, having the vibe, having the venue, um, the sponsors and all that stuff all come together. And so hopefully we can have that unite this year. Now on the days leading into the race and the days of the race, um, are you out there marking the courses? Are you pre-riding the courses to make sure nothing's been vandalized overnight? What's your role then once everything's set and it's game day? <laughs> well, that's that's part of the gig is actually setting it um, because I've, I've volunteered with some other races before like Breck Epic, like where I've helped mark their course or tear down course and realize there's a lot more um, that goes on behind the scenes than just showing up on race day. And that's coming from a mindset of like always being the the guy that just showed up strapped on the number plate and went hard to, to the finish line. And so seeing it from that perspective gave me the idea of doing it this way. So the, the role is, it was very challenging the week of because having um, really solid volunteers and people helping me out on the course crew was like um, invaluable from that standpoint. But, you know, we, myself, like I put in probably 60 something hours that week, if not 70 marking the course, like, People probably didn't know it, but I was tearing down course at Palmer after the race was over. And, you know, I marked the Rampart course in, in the dark, um, into the dark, not in the dark. But essentially, I was doing it until 12 a.m. that night before the next day, because the thing is, um, people, there were people that sabotaged the course. So I had people on the morning of myself and other riders going out free riding. Um, and that's the thing. It's like with anything, uh, other users feel like they have rights to these trails as, just as much as we do when we permit them and they're open. So there were people that had moved, were moving course marking in the Palmer Prologue the day we were marking it. So we started marking it at sunrise and we remarked several sections of it by noon because people were moving some stuff and taking tape down. So um, it was very challenging. So it's, it's kind of a constant on once, it, once it's go time for me um, and marking the courses and making sure to have those core group of people knowing where the course marking is and then somebody going out morning of and, and checking it. So. So after all the work's done and you finally have time to breathe, did you get a chance to enjoy any of the race? And what was your favorite moment of last year's Apex? Um, yeah, I mean, I did get to enjoy sections of it. Like luckily, like I served as a kind of time cut a few days because at the you know the second aid station or something like that, I would go to that point and then I would actually sweep the riders um, following the race and make sure that in make sure that people weren't behind that time cut luckily we were pretty generous and everybody made it through those that were wanting to um but then i actually got you know a clear run at the course um, from that standpoint i actually had some fun times descending uh jones and all the way down to jacks you know behind the, the the final riders because for me that's not very often there's always motos and hikers and people on the course so it's like with a couple hundred people running down it and then me sweeping behind um, i was able to have some fun runs with a clear course <laughs> for me personally that was that was awesome um, one of the, probably my favorite parts was I, I coach a lot of juniors, um, like talent ID camp for USA cycling and half for years around a junior Devo team, except for last year because of the COVID stuff. But, uh, was seeing some of the riders that I've worked with over the years racing and come back that were juniors and now in like the kind of 18 to U23 kind of thing, those riders doing so well, um, in the race itself. And there wasn't a lot and seeing like a lot of the people light up because there was hardly any events last year. And so with it being a September event, it was kind of cool to see people come back out of their shell a little bit and actually their, their faces light up and it's race time, like kind of gave them the satiation of what they needed, um, that, that outlet mental and physical and everything like that. So pretty cool seeing a lot of the, the Bear Devo kids that I've worked with in the past that did really well there and stuff like that. So it was cool. Uh, working with the younger mountain bikers is, is definitely so rewarding. And even though it was an odd time last year and it was a race unlike any we'd ever seen before with the distancing that we had to incorporate, yeah, there was just lightning in, in a bottle there and it, it was it was wonderful. What are you most looking forward to for the 2021 edition? I, I think it goes with the same things. I mean, um, we've got a couple course changes. Um, 
that are opening up different arenas. Like, and I think it's somewhat of behind the scenes because I feel like what this event is doing is opening up um, access to more of the trails and bringing some highlights to what uh, impact it has on our city. Because even when I first moved here, there was a lot of like hush hush secret society, like don't really know how to connect to a lot of the stuff. So now I feel like it's getting a little bit better where the the players that within the, the city that have impact are seeing that and how how much this outdoor economy works um, and how enjoyable it is. And a lot of the people that are sitting on the boards um, are doing the event, whether they're doing it in some form or fashion, like out there, you know, they're normally behind depth, but they were out there at aid stations last year when I would roll through um, at the end of the event. And some of them actually did several days of it themselves and they've got a true experience. So that's kind of one thing that I'm looking forward to behind the scenes is the forward progression and um, seeing it grow. And lastly, what are some words that you would like to leave with the audience, especially for those who are maybe sitting on the fence about, I, I don't quite know if this is for me, four days, that's a lot of riding. What would you leave them with? I'd say you can, it's, it almost sounds like a Leadville quote from Kim Clower, but it's like, you can do more than you think you can, because it's like, um, I've had some athletes sign up for it that were only roadies, um, but you know, it's in our, in our backyard and they wonder, am I capable? Is my bike capable? That stuff. And realistically, it's just turn the pedals over one after another. And it's like one of those things is like, you know, the, the time cuts are generous if you're on the fence of doing it, or if it's technically challenging, like you said, it's like you can walk sections or you can approach them with your own, um, own comfort level. It doesn't mean you've got to go at somebody else's level. So it, just getting through it can be not necessarily a life-changing event, but it's that that mental health of just getting out there in the backcountry and having support from aid stations and the people cheering you on and that stuff that can be so good. It's almost like the um, the people that were handing up um, whiskey and fireball shots and gummy bears and all that stuff. Like that was at the day where I was at a time cut. You should have saw people lighting up um, just because of those people cheering them on and all that stuff. And there's there's more going on out there than you think. And it's not it doesn't have to be a a truly competitive vibe if you don't want it to be. Um, obviously, you've got to keep the pedals turning to get from checkpoint to checkpoint and finish, but um, you can turn it into a super fun environment that normally you would have to pack all your stuff for these uh, for these days. And it's almost like bucket list. It's like, you know, I try to check off some of these routes once or twice a year um, that are kind of like big days. And it's like, you've got to load up a pack and do it. But it's like with an event like this, you get to to check them off and have this experience day after day and people are taking the stuff up there for you. So it makes it a, a good way to, to knock it off and see some great things. So get out there and do it. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Thank you again for joining us this morning, Daniel. Have a great summer and look forward to seeing you this September. Awesome. Thanks. Hopefully we'll see a bunch of people out there this September.